Well, hi everybody, and uh, welcome again to my shop. And uh, in this video, we're going to be looking at all <coughs> five of those electronic project kits kind of quickly. We're going to look them over. So we're going to start with this one: 30 in one electronics project lab. So let's see, 1995, 20 bucks. Great introduction to the world of, of ele electronics. Uh, build a radio burglar alarm, water detector, Morse code, practice circuits, simple computer circuits. So, not too many connectors. It's one of those spring type uh, connecting boards. Let's see. Sometimes there's some pretty cool pictures on here. Check this out. A satellite as envisioned in, uh, I'd say, the mid 70s for this guy. So let's go on here. Well, something on here, right? Yeah, the transistors, looks like two of them. Radio circuits, which looks like a coils, a variable capacitor, and the code key. Let's look inside. Oh! I've hardly looked at these, even though uh, I have them. I picked them up at a yard sale. Uh, two, two different yard sales I ended up with. Five of these. I suspect there's another one of these in my, uh, in my storage. So, manufactured in Taiwan, imported for Intertan, Canada, limited in Barrie. Barrie is a city north of Toronto. Or there's also Entertain Australia, and there's one UK, Belgium, Holland, France. The trademarks of the Tandy Corporation. Tandy Corporation is a big, big, big company. Then didn't Tandy start out with um, cow hides? <laughs> so here's some examples of the uh, very consistent layout in the book here. Wireless rain detector. Radio station. Hey, some of these make radio transmitters. You know, I could make a transmitter with one and a receiver with another. Let's see what happens. That might be fun. And the typical kinds of uh, different projects you can put in here. Maybe there's a list at the front. Yeah. They call them experiments. Electronic storage tank, one-way street, the bee, the leaky faucet, music from a pencil, the interesting sounding things, radio station, two transistor oscillator, and then different gates, AND gate, OR gate, NAND gate, and NOR gate. <coughs> Let's see if we can get a year on this. 1982. I was wrong. I thought it was mid-70s. Actually, this is actually from the early 80s. Wow. I, uh, I would have put that back almost 10 years earlier. And Scott, one of these classic the little earphones. Okay, it's got somebody's earwax in it. I don't think it's mine. Okay, so that that's, I guess this goes right out. This, this must come right out. Let's get it out. What's up here? It's this Commodore computer. Oh, it's a little uh, drawing stencil thing. <laughs> Maybe there's some crazy Commodore collector. He'd like that. So, yeah, very basic. Very light, very flimsy. Just cardboard here. No wonder they sold so many of these. Uh, they were pretty cheap, I imagine. Okay, two transistors, an LED, a diode. And so that's the 30 in 1. Safe and fun with easy instructions. Let's get the next one. Uh, 
Okay, here's the the Science Fair Electronic Digital Logic Lab Kit. I doubt this one's going to do a radio. 25 experiments in digital logic circuitry. Check out the picture here. Look at the hair on these guys. That's pretty interesting, eh? So, okay, I got to guess. This has got to be from the, I'd say 70s, well, by the hair, 73. Um, custom manufactured in Japan for Radio Shack, a division of Tandy. Located in Barrie, Ontario again. Great introduction to digital circuits. Hand, NAND, NOR, OR, LED, solderless. Yeah. So this is supposed to be the digital one. Ooh, look at the book. There's that cool picture again. Australia, Belgium, the UK. List of experiments. Light emitting diode operation. Manual switch inverter, inverter, inverter. Two input OR gate. So this is all digital stuff. Monostable multivibrator. A stable multivibrator. Oh, the basic stuff. It's in here. Uh, a little more of writing in this one to explain these circuits, I suppose. And, uh, oh, a little history here. here if you can see that. Look at the computer she's got going there. This is in a, a law enforcement application of course the abacus and the bones and the mechanical early mechanical calculator here. Interesting so there's a bit of history in here. Hollerus card tabulator used for the 1890 census. Yes that was a big turning point wasn't it? using cards for a census. And here's the Morse code key. I don't know. I don't think my CQ is going to be heard. So, now what's actually in here? What's actually in here? There's some old batteries. Oh my god. <laughs> I have no idea there were batteries in any of these. Yucca, yucca. I wonder how long those have been in there. Maybe I put them in. Forgot. I don't think I've ever done anything with with this. Just curious. What's left on these batteries? I bet you it's a zero. Let's see. The one that's leaking is probably a zero. Just just for fun's sake. Yeah, zero. Not too often you see. Yeah, I'm not even bother testing that. Let's get rid of these. Okay, so this guy's a digital guy. Not going to be making any radios. You know what? I should maybe I should try and figure out what I could do with all these combined into something. What could you do with all these at once? tape the box up that's falling apart. So let's get the next one. Okay, here we go. This is the 160 in one science fair project kit. I love the picture on the front of it. Hard to get the reflection off. This is the first one with a girl on it. And man, are they having a lot of fun. And I'm not sure why they're having so much fun because they haven't unpacked the parts. He's hooked one wire up to 
whatever that is, uh, it's like a digital a number, and they are just having a gas already. Looks like he's got his finger on this control, so he's hooked up one wire and he's studying the control, turning the control. So <laughs> that's not quite that easy for ages 10 and up. My gosh, 10 years old? Maybe. Let's see what other goody things here. Uh, with an illustrated manual, lab manual, has a lab manual. They have a very similar picture here. There's the uh, digital number. It's got a meter in it, that's kind of neat. It's got a uh, solar cell, that's kind of neat. It's got the radio stuff to build a radio. 160 circuits. That's pretty cool. Projects for building radios, a telegraph, a one-way telephone. Whoa, 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 whoa. A one-way telephone? That would not be a telephone, would it? A wireless mic. See, that's interesting. I could do the wireless mic as the input to a radio transmitter that transmits to a receiver. But I got three of them going. Yeah, that might be fun to do that. There's more batteries in this. Gosh. And lots of wires in this one. A loose light bulb floating around. There's the solar cell. One, two, three transistors. Three diodes. Variable resistor, like a potentiometer, output transformer, speaker. Hey, this is really quite complete. Input, input transformer. Oh, what's this? The meter appears to have, uh, uh, you know, cut out from some other, from some other one. Somebody cut the meter out of another one and stuck it in this one. Kind of weird. Here's a light relay, bank of resistors, bank of capacitors, and uh, oh, an integrated circuit. Check this out. Right here. That's an integrated circuit. And there's the circuit diagram for it. With a few parts actually mounted uh, externally to it. That's kind of interesting. It uh, looks like some kind of an amplifier, really, to me. And a couple of Darlington. A couple of transistors in Darlington there, I think. Oh, here's some 9-volt uh, battery input. A little higher voltage. Switch. Hey, this is pretty good. I like this one. It comes in this nice wooden cabinet. Can I pull this out? There's no getting that out. Really? They glued it in there? Appears to be the case. Appears to be glued in. So it's not coming out. What's under there? It's a wire. Lose wire in there. Thought there might be some secrets underneath there, but apparently not. So meter's cool. So uh, that, this is a pretty cool one. What year is this from? And there's no there's no booklet. There's no booklet. No booklet. That's a bit of a problem, isn't it? It's 160 in one, but with no booklet, it's not much of anything. Ooh, that's kind of unfortunate. Might be something on the internet. There's a fair bit about these on the internet. Let's go get the next one. Holy smokes. Look at the size of this thing. My System 7.
Futura, Futura. Well, here we are in the Futura. Look, taking a look at it. 150 in one. It's got two. It's got like a. It's a real bench sort of thing here. Hey, check that out. Looks like an integrated circuit of some sort. It sort of had the bigger parts laid out on the lower panel. Something going on through here. And then you have your array of parts up here. This might even be handy in my shop for crying out, <laughs> for crying out loud. <laughs> really? There's the power terminals. Build main projects. Morse code, light signal, uh, IC, one transistor radio, motor reversal switching circuit, high frequency signal tracer, diode type field strength meter. These are a little more serious, aren't they, for projects? 150 in all. No soldering irons needed. Who, who made this? I mean, just Futura. Who, who were they? No hint on here, so let's let's take it out of the box. Okay, so this is this is the upper back part. Check it out. There's a battery case back here. Come on, Mr. Camera. Battery case back in here, 9 volt position. Nice array of capacitors, resistors. Uh, thermistor. That's kind of interesting. Output to transformers, or little transformers anyway. Use them for whatever you want. More resistors. Capacitors. What's this? This is a, a coil of some sort here. Here's a uh, transistor here. Just one transistor? Okay. For now, we got out the other part here. Oh man, I tell you, if I had one of these when I was a kid, holy smokes. I would have gone wild. Okay, this one here. Um, so this is the wiring for all these parts down here. Like here's the switch terminals, here's the switch down here. And the meter doing some funny things there. Looks like it might be broken. Let's see, we got code key. Relay, switch, meter, solar cell, solar cell, whoops, solar cell, what is this, CDS, 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 uh, well, uh, cad cadmium something or other, is this some maybe a light sensitive uh, component, interesting. Tuning, volume control. Oh, check this out. Look at this. That's a poor man's integrated circuit. I guess this is the circuit diagram here. It's a diode, uh, input, voltage divider, um, output. Interesting stuff. Basically, it's a transistor with a few components around it. So, uh, and you can you can look right in and see the the components. Kind of interesting. It's really interesting. I've never seen anything quite like that. I'm sure this is only made for this toy. It's not made for. Uh, hey, check that out! Nice red light bulb. Yeah, nice speaker. This might make the good receiver. And I guess the way this works is these these kind of ooh, there's a broken piece here. Broken piece of plastic. 
down in this slot. But, so that's not going to work too well. But this is how it's supposed to sit, I guess. Something like that. Man, that's cool. That's a shop in itself right there. <laughs> who, who needs the rest of everything? Lots of wires, too, on these. So that's helpful. Okay, I'll put this guy away. Yeah, this would have... Uh, I might have been dangerous with this in hand. When I was a kid. Let's get the uh, the last one. I've saved the oldest one for the very end here. I'm pretty sure this is the oldest one. Now, okay. So this is called Electronic Workshop. I saw on the uh, internet quite a few of these that said Deluxe Electronic Workshop. So unfortunately this is not the Deluxe one. Made by Heathkit. What a wonderful company that was. And I think I can take it right out of the box here. That uh, my system seven didn't have a manual, did it? Darn it! But you know, again, I, I think these things I can probably find them on the internet because there's a fair bit about these. So uh, lots of uh, writing in here. This is the best and most powerful radio in this experimenter's kit combines all the best circuits of the other radios. It's interesting. Explanation of uh, how to visualize the operation of the various parts based on little people running down a wire. <laughs> Look at that. There's an explanation of a transistor. Collector, base, emitter. You got a whole whole bunch piled up at the collector. How's this working here? You got the guys at the top saying, hey, "What's the holdup?" The other guy says, "Oh, the guy on the base controls the gate." He goes, yeah, and he only lets a few of us through at a time. There's the guy down here controlling it controlling this gate up here. Too bad to use the term gate, because... Look at this explanation. This is... Come on! This is horrible. Here's an earphone, and they're showing these little guys, I guess this is supposed to be the electricity, jumping off a diving board and bouncing on the diaphragm and leaving. That's... What is that? Come on! I can't believe somebody would... But anyway... I like these little guys here. Look at these two guys. <laughs> okay. The Heathkit Junior Workshop is made to give you many hours of enjoyment. We also want to show you how electronic things like radios work. 1967. 1967. It's not as old as I thought. we got here. Okay, right away I see uh, here's that earpiece again. Same thing. <laughs> same one from the set from 20 years later. It has exactly the same earpiece in it. It's kind of funny. And uh, spring uh, spring connectors. Capacitors. The parts are looking a little older. There's the transistors. Three of them. Three of them on here. What's this? Uh, one of the spring things is loose here and has come off from somewhere. Don't really see where. And uh, 
I think somebody liked the speaker so much they took it. This is pretty bad. Look at that. The wire's not even under the terminal. This is ter really poorly done here. I wonder if you had to build the whole board. The, whole, the, the kit was a kit. I wonder. Maybe so. Kind of doubt it. I don't think they would uh, supply it in that kind of condition. But it's very poorly built. Yeah, there'd be instructions right away on how to wire it underneath, and that'd be pretty extensive too. And there's nothing here. Oh, wait a minute! They're showing how to put the feet on. It is a Heath kit, isn't it? There they are. They're showing how to wire it underneath. So you you built you built this thing. Right from square one. Okay, there's that putting in the coil. So, way to go, Heath kit. You had to build your kit before you could build things with your kit that you built. And uh, is there a list of projects? There must be a list of projects here somewhere. Voice operated relay. So you see, I could do a voice operated relay that triggers the uh, transmitter that sends uh, uh, my voice or a signal to a receiver. Just got to figure out what to do with the digital the digital ones. How do they fit in? Anyway, I think that's the end of the basic tour through these. Um, this one's very radio oriented, I think. Oh look, there's a spot to put a light in, but there's no light in it. A lot of them have relays in them too. Well, that's uh, that's a look at these project kits. To be honest with you, when I picked them up at a yard sale, I thought, okay, okay, when I'm 85 years old, maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe I'll be down to playing around with stuff like this. Of course, when I'm 85 years old, oh my God, what will, what what will the computer world be like then? Because 85 is a fair ways away for me. Lots is going to change. And, uh, of course, at 85, you know, you, you don't have the hand control and all that kind of stuff. So, anyway, I should not be planning for when I'm 85. I should be planning for when I'm just a year older from now, really. Excellent. So there we are. We've all had a closer look at them now, and I'm going to ponder what it is I need to build uh, with each one of these that I can then have them all work together in some kind of coordinated fashion. I think that's the challenge I'm going to take take on with these. And uh, I think today I'll probably just set them aside, uh, let, let you comment uh, on what you've seen here in case there's some more ideas. And I'm going to wonder who would, who wants to buy my official Commodore computer uh, stencil. <laughs> that is the coolest thing. Somebody wants this, I know it. Somebody wants this. And it could be me, you know, because I never talked about it and I've never shown it on a video. I have a pretty extensive collection of Commodore computers. <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. What have I got back there? I think I've got, I got one Vic 20 two or three 64's, I got a 128, I've got uh, hard drives uh, for all of them, I've got three screens, three Commodore monitors, and I've got a huge whack of software. Um, I don't even know what I got, I, I got, I got a, a row of discs this big easily. And uh, for any of you who might remember Commodore, he put a lot of programs on one disk because most of the programs took up just 10, 15, 20, 20K, not 250 megabytes like today. So, so I don't know what to do with that stuff. I got other little goodies hidden away in my, uh, actually it's a crawl space in my house, which I'm not going to reveal right now because somewhere down the road I will. So that's it for showing you these cool guys. And uh, 
Thanks a lot for watching. And we'll see you soon in the next video.